Hey guys, Greg here of Let's Solve Network Delay Time, leak code number 743. So we're given a network of n nodes labeled from 1 to n, and we're also given times, which is a list of travel times as directed edges. So each times at i is a triple of a u, a v, and a weight, which means u is the source node, v is the target node, so it's basically pointing u to v, and w is the time that it takes for a signal to travel from source to target okay so the triple is from u to v and it's marking how long it would take for the signal to travel from u to v so we're going to send a signal from a given node k and we need to return the minimum time that it takes for all of the n nodes to receive the signal if it's impossible for all the n nodes to receive the signal then we should return minus one okay so in this example here we're given this array of edges so we can see two one one means that node two points to node one so this edge right here and it has a time of one then 231 here says from 2 to 3. So from 2 to 3, it also takes 1. And another one, 3 to 4, it also takes 1. Okay, so if we have n equals 4 nodes and k is equal to 2, well, that means we're sending the source from 2. So it would go over to 1 and it could take 1 to get there. From 2 to 3, it takes 1 to get here. And from 3 to 4, it takes 1 to get over here. But it's actually 2 from 2 to 4. So the output is actually two, which is essentially the largest of any of those values, okay? I know it's confusing because it says return the minimum time it takes for all the end nodes to receive the signal. But if we found the smallest amount of time it takes to get to each of those, well, then it's essentially the largest of those values is the minimum time it would take for all of them to receive the signal. Because for all of them to receive it, you'd have to wait until the slowest one receives it. Hence, it's actually kind of the largest of those values. Okay, so let's look at this example here. So n equals five nodes, and these are our edges. So this one here says that from node one, we are directing over to node two, and the weight of that or the time of that would be one. The next edge says one to four with four. So one to four, and that is going to take four to do that. The next one is two, five, 10. So from node two, we are going over to node five, and it's going to take 10 to do that. Two, three, one says that from node two over to node three, that is going to take one. And five, four, four says from five over to four, that is going to take four. And the last one, three, four, one says from three, we can also get to four and it would take one to do that. So here's our graph and I'm just going to make it nice and big for us right here. So this is what we call a single source because we have one source here. Shortest path problem because we want to know the shortest path that the signal can take to get to all of the other nodes. We need the shortest path and not just any path because imagine if we had like a path like this, which was maybe five to get here. And then you could also take like six to get here. You wouldn't want to use the path of 11 to get over here. You would want to use just the simple path of one to get over here. You would want the smallest path from the source to all of the nodes. Okay, Dijkstra's needs some things to get started here. One is going to be a dictionary, which I'm going to call min times, or in general, a hash map. And it's going to map keys, which are the numbers or the nodes, over to the total distance it takes to get there, from the source over to that node. So at some point, we're going to have that it takes, basically, to get to two, it would take a minimum total distance of one to get there. And over to get to five, we'll see that the smallest distance to get to five is going to be 11. Okay, but this is going to start as empty. Now, another thing we're going to need is a min heap. Okay, so this is going to organize by the minimum distances. And the things we put on the heap are going to look like this, which is the distance. This is going to be the total distance it takes to get to that node from the source. So to get there from particularly here, and we're talking about the node to get there. So it's going to be basically two tuples of the total distance it takes from source to that node. And this is the node that it's going to. Okay, we're all set up here, and essentially we'd start this off by initializing something on the heap, which is going to be a distance of zero to get to the source, which is one. Okay, so our distance of zero to get over to our node of i. That makes sense. We're starting here, and it shouldn't take any distance to start there. Okay, so we'd essentially start popping stuff off the heap. So we'd look at this. We'd see that, okay, we have a distance from the source to this node of zero, and the node of interest i is just one. And so, okay, we can get over to node one 
in a distance of zero. We actually want to write this down in min times. So to get to one, we can actually get there in a distance of zero. But for each of our neighbors, we can now get to somewhere else. Okay, so we can now get to two and we can do that in one. So we'll put that on the heap, which is in a distance of one, we can get over to two and we can get over to the node of four. So in a distance of four, we can get over to node four. We'll put those both on the heap and the smaller distance will be the one on the top. So we did that for each of one's neighbors and now we're ready to pop another thing off the heap. Okay, so we can get over to node i or node two in a total distance of one. So from the source over to two, we can get there in a distance of one. Now, if we haven't seen this node before, this distance is going to be the smallest way of getting there. We're guaranteed that because we're using a min heap. So have we been here before? No, we have not. So the smallest way we can get there to two is in a total distance of one. Once we've set this, we are never going to update this again. Because it's a min heap, this is the smallest distance that we can take to get there because we're popping from this min heap. But now from two, we have some new options. We're able to get over to three in a distance of one. So in a distance of one, no, not the local edge. We mean in a total distance of two. So in a total distance of two, we can get over to node three. And in a total distance of 11, we can get over to node five. Okay, those are our new options. So we've seen all of two's neighbors and we can start popping off again. So the smallest distance here is going to be two. Okay, we can get to three in a total distance of two. Have we been to three before? No, we haven't. Okay, so this is the smallest way we can get to three is with a total distance of two. But we have some new options. Now that we've been to three, we can get to four in a total distance of, well, it takes two to get to me. And so it's just one more to get over to here. And so it is going to be a distance of three to get over to the node of four. That is a smaller distance. Note that even though we saw this edge at the very beginning, we're not even taking it. We're forcing ourselves down the path of the smallest way to get to the nodes. Okay, so we'll take this off, pop this here, and now we're visiting four again not from this path we're visiting it over here which is the shorter path have we been here before no we haven't so the smallest way we can get to four is with a total distance of three we would then have no options over here because this has no neighbors and so we're simply done with that one we would now pop this off and we say oh okay is the smallest way to get to four via a distance of four no it's already in this min times here we don't even need to compare the distances we know that because this came out after because it was already in here we already found the version with a smaller time so if it's in min times already we just ignore it and move on now we can get to five in a total distance of 11 we have not been to five so the smallest way to get there is with a total distance of 11 we have now selected all of the nodes here so you would run this until your heap is empty and then after it's empty and we have a way to get to all of the nodes okay cool so we need to return the minimum amount of time it takes to get to all of the nodes well the worst that it takes is 11 to get over to 5 so we actually need basically the maximum of each of these values i know it's weird that it's a maximum when the problem is asking for a minimum but we got the minimum through the smallest amount of time we can take to get to these nodes and then to actually get to all of them well we'd have to do the worst amount of time which is 11. after 11 we know that we'd get to all of these places and so we would return in this case it would be 11. now there's one other scenario that could happen here is if you had a six basically just floating over here so that would be just the change of n equals six there's no connections over here even if you had like some other connections here like maybe six is going over to seven so there is actually seven nodes for example the point is that if your source is not connected over to all of the other nodes here if there's not a path from the source to all of the nodes well we could detect that by saying well we found five things you know our min times here had collected five things but we actually had seven nodes we were supposed to find well if those aren't going to match then it's basically impossible to reach all of the nodes and so in that case you would return minus one Okay, so let's code this up. So we'd start by getting an adjacency list for the graph. So graph is a default dict, which takes a list. And so for each u and v and the time it takes to get from u to v in times, that's our edge. Well, from u, so graph at u dot append, so we can get to v in that time. 
So it's going to be a list of two tuples. Okay, we can get our min times, which is our dictionary. That's just an empty dictionary. And we can also get our heap, which is just going to be min heap is going to be for now initialized to just holding zero and K. So remember, it has basically two tuples of I'll actually write it as a comment. It's the distance from source to the node and basically the node that it actually is here. So from source here, source is K. Well, it's a distance of zero to that. And for the other ones, it'll be the total distance it takes from source to that node and then the actual node that you're talking about. Okay, and to actually interact with the heap, we're going to have to do an import heap Q. That's how you do it in Python. That'll implement a min heap, which is good because we need one. So then while we have a min heap, we have something to pop off here. The time it takes from K to I, distance from the source to the node, and I itself is equal to heap Q dot heap pop from the min heap. So we take something off the min heap. Now, if we've seen this before, we don't care for it because we've already marked down the minimum time it takes to get there. So if I is in min times, well, then just ignore it. We just need to move on. Otherwise, well, we need to mark it. And this is the smallest amount of time it takes to get there. So the min times at I is going to be set to time from K to I. Once we set this, we're never going to set it again. This is the smallest amount of time it will take from K to I. Okay, now let's look at the neighbors because we have new options here for neighbor and neighbor time. So the amount of time it takes from our current node, which is I over to this new neighbor in the graph at I. Okay, so what is this graph at I for each of your neighbors, which is a node and the amount of time it takes to get to that node. So for each neighbor and neighbor time in the graph at I, well, again, we only care about this if we haven't seen it before. So if neighbor is not in min times, then we care about it potentially. Heap Q dot heap push onto the min heap. We're going to give that the time from K to I plus Plus the neighbor time and the neighbor. Why is that? Well, we always want on the heap the distance from the source to the node. So this is the amount of time it takes to get to our current node, which is I, but then we're talking about our neighbor. So the amount of time it takes to get to the neighbor is the amount of time it takes to get to me plus the amount of time it takes to get to the neighbor. And then you also need to say which neighbor you're talking about. This is eventually going to pop everything we can from the heap and it'll fill up min times as much as possible. If the graph was connected from the source, so if we could get everywhere, well, that would be the case if the length of min times is equal to n. So n is the number of nodes that we have. If the length of min times is n, well, that means we found everything. So you can return what do you want? Well, it's the maximum of the min times dot values. Okay, min times is a dictionary of keys and values. If we can hit the maximum, then we can hit all of the nodes receiving the signal, and therefore we'd return that. Otherwise, if this is not the case, well, then you'd have to return minus one. Because if you didn't have n things in min times, that means you'd have less than that, and so some of the nodes could not receive the signal. So we'd return minus one. Now, the time and space complexity of this is a truly awful discussion, so I'm actually just going to leave it as big O of V plus E times log of V. Yes, this is the case. It's not easy to understand why. You can ask ChatGPT why that is the case for Dijkstra's and it'll let you know. It's pretty darn complicated. The space complexity of this is very similar at just big O of V plus E. That's at least the standard for these types of graph problems. Usually that is the case. Okay, here's the code. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was and have a great day. Bye bye.